DJ D, baby. Uh. Oh, this is a Mix Boss exclusive. Hey y'all, this is DJ D. You are listening to Mix Bosses right about now and I do have a very special caller on the line. Just before we get to that though, big ups to all of the supporters and those that have been holding it down for Mix Bosses worldwide. But right, in our, right about now, we are going direct to the US. We do have DR on the line. DR Lansky, I believe. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Just uh, happy to be on the show. Tell you the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm just, just really, uh, you know... But what's the word? I can't even put words into it to be over there and get my music heard over there. It's great. Which is awesome. And um, before we go on, have I pronounced your name correctly? Yes, it's actually Dyer Lansky. Dyer Lansky. All right, let's get that right straight up. And um, we do obviously want to find out a little bit more about you. I have heard some of your tracks and am definitely feeling the flavor at the moment. So um, what I want to know is who is Dyer Lansky and also how did you make your start in the music scene? Well, you know... I grew up in uh, Riverside, California, which is um, over here. It's, it's like 50, 50 miles away from Los Angeles, if you will. Mm. And uh, my family I grew up with actually played a lot of piano uh, growing up, like blues and, and old boogie woogie, kind of like real old music from, you know, like late 1920s and 30s and real had a you know, good swing to it. So I kind of grew up playing the piano. Um, you know, and, and not really the classical, you know, Mozart and Beethoven type of stuff, you know, like real kind of gritty sounding piano music. Mm. And But I always loved hip hop. There was there was some about it. Even, you know, when I heard my first song, it was, I knew I wanted to be in hip hop somehow. But I was lucky because I had a musical family. So I was able to put music into hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And, and definitely, and um, definitely did that with, with my music. And, as, you know, as far as the name Dyer Lansky, you know, I really got that, not only from being um, in dire need to get good music out there, especially with out here in the U.S. right now, there's a, you know, the, the, the rap game, kind of just people put out song after song after song, and it doesn't really feel like they really put their heart and soul into it anymore. So I'm in dire need to really do that, you know, and, um, but that's really me. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm a hip-hop dude. I'm a hip-hop head. I've been listening to hip-hop since the 80s, and so... You know, I'm hoping to, 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 to get these people to, to kind of do the research of um, hip hop back in the day and, and maybe we can get this circle going into really good music. And I love that. And thank you so much for doing that because, um, I mean, I'm sure that most people out there have noticed the change in the game and the difference, especially in terms of, you know, hip hop music. And I think you hit the nail on the head right there when you said, you know, the heart and soul and, and the feeling behind it. So thank you for bringing that back. Um, what I'd love to know is how did you actually make your start in the music scene? You know, when I started in the music scene, I was a, um, uh, we have a store out here called um, Guitar Center. And Guitar Center, you can go buy all sorts of music equipment and studio stuff. And I, I started working there and really learned how to do music. I was always doing music though. But you know, going there, you have to learn the equipment, you know, no matter what it is. And you know, they, they basically certify you to be a studio technician in my case, because I worked in the pro audio department where, you know, we sold everything for studios. And then I just started working in studios for free and started to learn how to engineer, you know, kind of an internship type of thing, but you know, meeting people from Guitar Center and whatnot. Yeah. And, you know, uh, what's crazy though is if I would have really pushed my music since I started working in studios, I would have already been in Australia meeting you face to face right That's now. Right. But I always kept it. I always kept it so business because I was there to do a job. You know, so when I'm sitting there and I've worked for a lot of major artists, I've never really just said, "Hey, listen to my demo," yeah. or "Hey, you know, I, I got these too. Why don't you, you know, why don't you listen to this?" I always just kept it 100 professional and just kind of got my name out there. And then I started uh, my own production company called Die Four Productions with my buddy that I grew up with in Riverside, Mass Four. And I had an idea, and I said, you know, we're gonna we're gonna put out a whole camp, and we're gonna do this the right way. And the last couple of years, it's just been it's been great. Loving that, loving that. So, um, you mentioned the last couple of years, but how long have you actually been in the scene? Um, I've been doing hip hop like as far as doing shows and stuff like that for 17 years. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. I, you know, it, it, but it still makes me happy, and that's what I, that's a, the part of the thing too about bringing this good hip hop back. And what I like to say too is substance. You know, bringing with music with substance back is that I'm still excited that we have the chance to do it. You know, and and a lot of this younger crowd is the future of everything we're trying to do right now. 
And if, if they can do the knowledge and kind of remember where this came from, I think they're going to want to put better music together. I totally agree. And it's, it's hard right now because you can spend a little bit of money and have a studio in your room. You know what I'm saying? But, and they use, you know, people with YouTube how to use the equipment and this and that and get it done, but they're really just kind of throwing stuff together and pushing it out there. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Yep, no, totally agree. And it's, it's a gap that I've noticed in the music scene, but also even in, in, in terms of DJing and so on. Um, it seems like there's been less of a handover process, you know, in the past years. Whereas in the days that I guess, you know, I'm, I'm a quite a similar age to you are. So in the, in the sort of days that we were coming up, we were mentored. We were brought into the scene by the guys that were holding it down at that time, you know. So, um, yeah, I think that's possibly a little bit of a gap uh, that explains where we're at today, I guess. I mean, it does. It does. You know, and I had um, I had a P&D from EPMD on my show a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's cool. On, on my Die 4 radio. And he, and he brought up a good point, though. He said, but at the same time, there still has to be a balance. You know, if, if we all made that music, that hip-hop that we really like, then that's all there would be. You know what I'm saying? With, with the, when you do have kind of that saturated sound, it actually makes the music we want to do a little more unique and brings balance to the game. And I never kind of thought of it that way, that there, there's, you know, there's a pro and con to the whole situation. But, if, you know, there's a little bit of that music you still need out there to separate everybody. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And there's a place for all of it, right? Absolutely. For everything. <laughs> That's right. So, speaking of uh, people like EPMD, who are some of your other favorite artists, I guess, coming through the game? You know, I'm a big, um, I'm from the West Coast, so, you know, everybody in the West Coast, Ice Cube, West Side Connection, their whole, you know, crew, and the Dog Pound and Snoop, you know, I grew up to, and, you know, I've met with them, you know, a bunch of times, and actually, I do a lot of production for uh, BG Mac from All From The High, which is part of West Side Connection, I, you know, with Mac 10 and Ice Cube and all them. We actually had him on the show not too long ago, so big shout out to you, Binky Mac. Yeah, yeah, that's a good friend of mine. Binky Mac and I work together a lot, actually. That's great. Love his flavor, too. Yeah, he's great. And he, I mean, the dude's really a veteran when it comes to his West Coast hip-hop. I mean, it re- he really is. So as a kid, you know, I listen to him. So it's really, you know, ironic I work with him now. But as far as lyrically, because I do have that hip-hop, I was a huge boot camp clip fan. Uh, mm-hmm. Duck Down Records, um, you know, Huffy Skelta, OGC, uh, you know, Sean Price, Fab Five, Smith & Wesson, or Coco Brothers, we say people, but their whole camp, I've listened to Black Moon, you know, huge, huge Black Moon fan, and I've listened to them since the night, you know, early 90s. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think lyrically, it kind of kept me sharp, too, because I didn't just listen to that West Coast kind of gangster rap, you know, even though it did, I mean, the West Coast gangster rap really put you know, hip hop on a map in a crazy level. So I'm not saying they did anything wrong, but I can still be kind of lyrical and witty and, and kind of represent from both coasts as far as an art style. Love that. So, you know, and also Tupac. Tupac was a huge influence to me because I know everybody says that, but Dude was a poet, you know, and when you're at your worst and best times, he says some shit that could bring you to tears. I'm sorry. You know, he's, he, he, he says some things that's like, you know, wow, like, I can't believe he just said that. I'm going through that right now. Exactly. There's not too many artists that can do that, you know. How many people I have spoken to just through this show alone that have said the same thing, it's pretty amazing that he's had such an impact and connected with so many people on that level. Yep, and it really has. I, mean, I just say, you know, I say hip-hop saved my life, and I always say that. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, hip hop. Gotta love it. Um, okay, so yeah, you got it. <laughs> with with that in mind, do you have a if if you had obviously you've worked with some pretty big names and some awesome collaborations already, but do you have a dream collaboration that you have not yet done? Yeah, so um, there's a somewhat new producer. He he's actually been out for years, but a lot of people, are, you know, especially internationally, still starting to really hear from him. There's a producer named Apollo Brown from yeah. Detroit. Yeah, that I'm definitely can't wait to work with. Um, I'm trying to get that, you know, definitely going, at least have them on my show and then, you know, spark it from there. That's it. I'm also working right right now with a, a feature and a, a couple songs together with Razcast. Mm. And uh, he's from the West Coast, but very, very lyrical. I've definitely, you know, studied his game for a long time and, and can't wait to get something going with him. Um, and, of course, you know, I would, I would love to do, you know, I don't know how feasible this is, but if I, you know, really just like, man, who could, if I could do a song with anybody, I mean, I would have to go back and do a song with like Rock Him. I'd have to get a cool T rap song. I'd have to do a KRS One song. I um, mean, you know, Big Daddy Kane. I'd, I'd have to definitely get the OGs and Boston. <laughs> 
Absolutely loving that. And I can't wait to hear that when it happens, because no doubt you're going to make that happen, yeah? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> We're 2014 for, for Dyer Lansky and Die For is going to be a crazy year. We're ending it off with a bang, and I, I'm just so excited. Like, I, I, you know, I cannot wait to, to New Year's. And I'm not talking about for the parties, because as soon as 2014 starts, it, it's on and popping. It's about to happen. And, okay, what can you tell us about what's coming up in 2014? Well, definitely the Die For Tour. Um, I can't wait to do that. Obviously, we're starting here in the United States, but I hope to be in UK and Australia and places like that towards the fall of, uh, of next year. Um, I'm releasing my, my full album um, that's going to be on iTunes. I also have my artists, uh, JR, Wayne G, Mad Four, and Jay Soap. They're all releasing their albums. So there's, I mean, there's lots of music coming out for Die 4 within even the first like 90 days of the year there's going to be three or four Die 4 albums out videos out tour and doing shows you know crazy features uh, I mean just you name it we're going to be doing it and I've been setting everything all, all this year to make this happen and it's definitely going to go down huge huge well I'm actually very keen to play a couple of your tracks coming up next one of the ones that I did definitely want to sneak in tonight was Streets Won't Let Me what can you tell me and tell our listeners about this track yeah the Streets Won't Let Me there's an old school sample on there that, that people recognize and and really what it was is that man I've been working so hard on music for the last two years mm -hmm. now I mean for 17 years now but as I slowly get more into the game and a little more successful and successful you always run into these problems sometimes either it's mentally or physically or, or you know environmentally that sometimes the streets don't let you chill you know I grew up in you know kind of bad neighborhood you know wasn't the best kid growing up and went through a lot and you just kind of see no matter where you are in life that you can definitely get caught up in that you know, if you're not careful. And sometimes the streets won't let you chill no matter how good you want to be. And I got a lot of uh, family members and a lot of friends that still have to deal with, you know, the streets and stuff like that. So, you know, it was just kind of like my venting, you know, almost is to say, hey, you know, these, these streets sometimes won't let me chill. But it's definitely dope song. It's off a mixtape that I, I had dropped this year called Uncontrollable Substance with one of my artists, Jay So. Love that. And where can listeners find that? Plus also find you online. Oh, yeah, um, you can find anything. I have, you know, Dyer Lansky, D-I-A-R-L-A-N-S-K-Y, um, on Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter. I also have Die4Productions.com, where actually all my music, because it's the end of the year, everything on my page is a free download. So every album I've done this year, you can download the whole album with the artwork. It's MP3, high-quality, mastered. Um, all you got to go is if you go to Die4Productions.com and go to Die4 Music on there, um, you go to each page, or I mean, each album you'll see, you just have to click on the album cover and you, it will take you to a straight, direct, free download, nothing you have to log into or anything like that. Best Christmas present ever. Yeah, as in music, <laughs> music. I think it's better than getting music for Christmas, man. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. When, when we're talking about your music, I think it's a pretty good gift. Oh man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm just, I'm just blessed to be on the show. I'll tell you what. Pleasure to have you on the show, and it's been wonderful speaking to you. Looking forward to hearing more in 2014. Before we get to these tracks, though, any shout outs for anyone out there? Yeah, definitely shout out to my Die 14. Um, everyone at the coalition that I work with over here, So Focus Radio, Dirty Basement Radio, uh, Green Leaf Network, Shut 'Em Down Radio, my man Justified, obviously my girl Marion. Uh, Mariana over there yeah. in New Zealand, you know what I'm saying? Big shout out to you oh. and for having me on here for sure. And I, I'm setting it up. Um, we're going to talk a little bit behind the scenes because I'm, I'm getting the date together uh, for, for next week because I definitely want to have you stop by my show as well. Oh, I'd love to. That would be awesome. Thank you for the op. My, uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll work it out. Um, definitely, I, I told uh, I told her that I would definitely know something within the next few hours to make everything work. Cause I'd love to have you over here now. I'm telling you right now, oh. it'd be an honor. I would be blessed and so grateful to do so. So I'm super looking forward to that and even more so looking forward to playing some of these tracks right about now. So let's get it. Time for some DR Lansky right about now on Mix Plus. Here we go.